Spielman on sports every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 2.15, linebacker in studio. All right, where are you off to this weekend, my friend? I am uh, North Carolina at Clemson, so it'll be my second trip down to Death Valley, and it's a great atmosphere for a college football game. One of the perks of my jobs. Before we go further, though, is there any truth to the rumor that you drove over to Zanesville and let all those wild animals out? Is there any truth to There's that? There's no truth that I freed the animals, <laughs> but I think that I saw uh, a Nick Dundee over there. From the old school crocodile right. done. You know what? It's a What about Dorgy? I don't want to see any like lion heads hanging up in his uh, over his fireplace. You know what? I wish that he went over there just to look around. I said, go over there, take a look around, want, see what's going on. You just want the, wander a you little want bit. The animals to have vengeance. Just on wander Dorgy. a little bit. Well, you know, they only get fed every now and then. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I digressed. I just I couldn't resist the opportunity. I thought maybe you might be under suspicion. No. All right. No, it's, okay. It's, you didn't do and it. And it's a very sad situation. Don't get me started. I, I don't <laughs> want to turn into the, the real animal <laughs> activist right now. But uh, talk to me a little bit about this Wisconsin-Michigan State game. I think it's very appealing. Uh, Wisconsin wants to get a little revenge on Sparty for last year. Sparty's coming off their fourth straight win over Michigan. Could be a preview of the Big Ten title game. A lot on the line this Saturday. There is, and I think Michigan State has uh, clearly uh, shown themselves to be the number two team in the Big Ten, in my opinion. And that's just the eyeball test. And I've done a lot of the top teams in the Big Ten, so I know what I see, and I've seen them all on film. And Michigan State can beat Wisconsin. It's at home. Kirk Cousins is a dangerous, dangerous quarterback. If they can get Keyshawn Martin from dropping the ball, then you have two legitimate threats. Edwin Baker, the tailback. Uh, got it going a little bit against Michigan's defense. I think he had over 170 or 180 yards. And so they're capable of beating, but they're the number two defense in the land. Now, they might be without Golston. We talked about this earlier in the week. The Big Ten has reviewed the plays, the two plays that we talked about where he twisted Denard Robinson's head under a pile and also where he threw a right punch. So they might be without one of their defensive ends who – you know, is a, is a good player for them, and they'll miss him. But uh, they're 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 pretty much seven deep. So I know that Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator, feels comfortable with whatever defensive lineman that he lines up with. We saw Kirk Cousins here, and he wasn't that impressive. What has he done since then that's opened your eyes? Um, I just watch him throw the ball, and a lot of his throws, and some of the interceptions, a lot of them are on receivers whether it's the route being run. I'm not making excuses mm-hmm. for him because he doesn't make excuses, but I'm just telling you what coaches tell me and what I see on the film. But when he's on, he doesn't miss, and he throws the ball to spots where only his guy can take it, and he plays without fear or hesitation. In other words, he he's not afraid to make a tough throw and let his guys go make a play. The problem that he's had, he's had a couple drops by his guys, and his numbers aren't down. But remember, Mark D'Antonio coaches much like Coach Trussell coached where they're going to run the ball, be a physical football team, and throw it when they need to throw it. And they can throw it effectively, but they're going to, you know, they're not a hurry up. They're going to take their time. I think last week uh, against Michigan, there were two teams that finally huddled. <laughs> and we actually had time. And I think their Michigan State only ran something like 60, 65 plays or some crazy number like that where, you know, the, the game, for example, for Texas A&M and Arkansas, those two teams had a crazy amount of offensive plays. Wisconsin's won all their six all six games by thirty plus points. Yeah. Uh, mm. I know things will probably change this Saturday, but just to sum it up, who do you like? I like Wisconsin. I think they're the clear favorite in the Big Ten. I think they can be beaten by Michigan State, and I think we can get them here at home. Now it's going to take a uh, a massive monumental effort by us because this of our struggles offensively, and we'll see if we can improve on the passing game through the bye week. I read where Luke was talking about stuff that. You know, every coach knows and he knows, but we talked about it on Buckeye Roundtable. We talked about it on the big show about maybe working and be- making the short passing game a little bit more efficient. One, to keep a defense guessing, and two, to get Braxton Miller some confidence. You want a short passing game, how, what do you do? Shotgun and then get it out of his hands do it quickly? Uh, you, yeah, you can do it either or. I mean, a three-step drop. A three-step yeah. drop defined from under center is exactly what it says. One, two, three, throw. A three-step drop out of a shotgun is designed by, if you ever see the quarterback, take the shotgun snap, doesn't take any steps, just kind of shifts his feet and finds an open receiver. It's all based on timing. And you can do uh, certain three-step drops for certain defenses that teams run that you'll have more opportunities to complete passes. For example, if they're in a little bit of a soft zone and the quarterback and the receiver get a pre-snap read of that, understanding like from film work or study Mm -hmm. 
we know and we trust that they're going to be off. The corners are going to be off. So all we have to do is rise up, get the snap, throw a hitch or a slant. And if it's only for a three- or four-yard gain, that's okay. It gets him a completion, which then in turn you hope lights his fire a little bit and gets him going. And, <clears throat> you know, it's we were talking about this off the air a little bit, you and I. You know, it's not out of the realm of possibility if he gets nothing going that uh, we see Kenny Guyton. Now, we're trying to read the, between the lines. That's what we do. We speculate yeah. a little bit on this show. But if Kenny Guyton's getting more reps, and he's the more reps that he's getting, maybe he's focused more in practice. And, again, I'm just guessing here, but maybe all of a sudden he's turning heads in practice. And from my, what I remember and what little I saw of Kenny, he throws a pretty good ball. It, it's, it's not like it's horrible. So – Maybe we'll see Kenny Guyton if the offense uh, sputters a little bit. Yeah, his his uh, potential has been a roller coaster. At one time, oh, we're going to play him on special teams, and that seemed like that would end his quarterback career, but now he's kind of back in, and maybe it's because Bowserman was so ineffective, and maybe, like you said, you don't know where you're going to get with Miller. If he's completely ineffective against Wisconsin, then he may have to make a change, and if he does, it might go to uh, Kenny Guyton. We, Terrell Pryor's future now with the Raiders. Right. He said he wants to play quarterback. That clearly is out now. He's not going to be the starter there, or not even get a chance. Well, he had a five-game suspension. He wasn't going to be the starter there for a while. But now giving up those first round, getting Palmer, I mean, his future is set for him. Does he have to adapt now? Does he have to say, I'll do whatever it takes, wildcat, red zone, receiver? How does he get on the field? Yeah, I mean, I I think you can still be a quarterback and develop. I mean, nobody was thinking of Terrell Pryor starting this year anyway. Probably nobody was thinking of Terrell Pryor starting next year. I mean, you had Jason Campbell. Campbell, You were winning with Jason Campbell. The guy that should be frustrated is Jason Campbell because now where does that leave him? Yeah, rehabbing. Yeah, rehabbing. Maybe not coming back. a collarbone, and and all of a sudden he's he's expendable because he's cost a lot more money than Terrell Pryor or Kyle Buller. Or where does that leave Kyle Buller? Terrell Pryor is fine. But there's no hurry for him to get on the field, and which could be a good thing for him where he can continue to develop his skills as a quarterback. Now, the Raiders might look at it and say, look, we want to keep Carson Palmer, we want to keep Campbell, and we want Bowler as our number three at, at league minimum. And Terrell, it might be time for you to look at other places where we can help you, and that's up to Terrell. I mean, he's going to have to make that decision. Uh, I'm assuming he wants to be an NFL player. And he's going to have to bury his ego a little bit if he says, well, I'm not a quarterback, then make that transition into another position, which, by the way, you just can't do overnight. I mean, you're talking about the guys that are best in the world at what they do, right? All of a sudden, I've never played receiver. And these other folks that talk about, well, just put him at tight end. Okay, go go block Jared Allen. Yeah, good luck with that. (laughs) You you never blocked a soul in your life, but block the guy that has nine and a half sacks in the NFL. Would you take a chance on Terrell Owens if he does pass a physical in the next couple of weeks and he and he's healed? I know there's a lot of uh, different intangibles he brings to the table, including a headache at times. Would If you were a team that I needs mean, a receiver, would you take a chance on him? I'd have to really need a receiver, and uh, I'd have to be in a playoff hunt, and it would have to be for league minimum, and it would have to be just a one-year deal. And uh, – a lot of factors. If I was, I had devastating injuries at receiver. I needed a veteran. I needed a guy that uh, can catch the ball. Um, and I imagine that. I don't know if this is true or not, but I'll go out and I'd have to interview him to see if he's been humbled at all. And that hey, just go out, run your routes. If you catch a ball, fine. If you catch ten, fine. If you don't catch any, fine. And if he's good with that for league minimum, I'd probably take a hard look at him. Absolutely. All right, well, safe travels this week. Appreciate your time, man, and uh, we'll see if Clemson's for real. I know they're climbing. They're undefeated, so we'll see. They Sammy Watkins, true freshman. Uh, Tommy Luganville does a great job for ESPNU and uh, the ESPN 150 recruiting. Uh, has uh, Sammy Watkins as a Heisman Trophy candidate, so if you get time, watch him. He's a really explosive player. Sounds good. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate right. it.